This code here demonstrates how we can apply the exponential smoothing technique uh, to get the uh, signal smoothed out over time, even if we've got varying sampling times. So in this sketch, we're defining a time constant here as 400 milliseconds. And in our setup, we're just setting up the serial port and waiting a little while, then printing out some of the information about what's going on. More importantly, in our loop, we're getting a simulated analog value here. And that's coming from this function down here, this simsig function, which combines a whole lot of things together. It's not particularly important to recognize what's going on. We're going to see the values that this returns printed out anyway. And one thing to notice is that after a minute, it's going to start adding some noise to the signal. So we'll have this continuously varying signal, and then we'll have it a little bit later with some noise. Now as we go through the loop, we're getting this signal value, and we're calculating how much weight we should put on the latest measurement based on how long it's been, the delta t, since we took the last measurement. And we're going to compare delta t to the time constant. If it's been a really long time, we'll put full weight on the newest measurement, and we'll ignore the old measurements. If it's been a shorter time, then we'll put, us, put some weight onto the new measurement and some weight, 1 minus w, onto the old measurement, the smooth value that we saved from last time. And finally, if it's been a while, we'll print out some data so that we can see what's going on. So let's compile and run this. And I'm going to choose the uh, serial plotter here so that we can follow along the, the data values that we're printing out. So in red, which is kind of hidden on the axis here, is our uh, AR value. And now we can see it separately. The red is what we measured, and the blue is the smooth value of it. So you can see that over time, the smooth value is lagging behind the measured value. It's not getting quite as big. And so that's one of the downsides of smoothing, is it's going to average off a bunch of stuff. On the other hand, the smoothing will help us eliminate noise. And we'll see that after a minute when we start putting the noise in. So we've got the red value as the signal, the blue value is the smooth value, and you'll see that the faster the signal is changing, the harder it is for that smooth value to keep up with it. And now we get some noise, and we see that the smooth value the blue one is going in a fairly straight line here, while the red one has got a bunch of noise oscillating up and down. It still has the same kind of lag behavior, but it's allowed us to eliminate the noise. And when the noise gets larger, we see that it, it can be quite an effect. So let's try some different possibilities on time constant to see if we can get rid of some of that lag while still being able to follow what's going on. So I'm going to go back to the code over here. I'm going to change that time constant. Let's go, instead of from, for 400, let's go for just 40 milliseconds for our time constant. So a much shorter time constant. And I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to change this one so that it gives us the noise immediately. So I run it, it says it's done uploading, oh, but we got some problems here. Sometimes this happens and I'm going to have to close that serial monitor, redo the uploading, and then once everything's working, I'll start the serial plotter again. We wait a couple of seconds and then we should start seeing some data coming out. So there's our noisy data and the blue line in between seems to be following a little more smoothly. It's not giving us as big a variation due to the noise. But I think maybe 40 milliseconds is a little too fast a time constant 
it's still showing quite a bit of noise in the blue section. So let's turn that off. Let's go back over here and try some compromise in between. Let's try 100. And I go to the serial plotter. I'm getting noise, and the blue line's looking a lot flatter now. So it looks like my choice to smooth at 100 milliseconds, it responds pretty quickly, and it's staying fairly flat in that zone in there. Although, still some noise. Let's try 200. Two hundred might be a better compromise in between. Looking pretty flat there, a little longer lag time. Looking fairly smooth through there, not as jumpy as it was before. And yeah, that has smoothed things off a fair bit. We've got a little bit of lag time, but that sign curve looks a lot smoother. So I think 200 might be a good choice. And the choices you choose for this time constant for the smoothing are entirely about the kind of signal you've got and how much lag you can tolerate. So the longer the time constant, the more smoothing you've got, but the less well it's going to follow rapid changes. So that's a choice you've got to make to, to sort out the, the system that you're looking at. Usually, if you're sampling really quickly, i.e. not delaying very long between samples, then you can have a pretty small time constant and get a good result. Let's try that out. So now I've gone back to a time constant of only 40 milliseconds, so fairly quick. So I should get a quick response. But I've also gone down here and I've eliminated this delay. So I'm no longer waiting so long between samples. So if there are more samples to average over, then I'll have more of an opportunity to smooth out that noise <coughs> in between samples. So let's see what happens now if I compile that and then go and look at what comes out on the plotter. And I'm seeing good follow there. It looks like the blue is pretty smooth and it looks pretty smooth there and it responds quickly coming down to here and in there smooths off the noise way more effectively. So the faster I can take samples the better. And here we see it's following pretty closely while still having a smooth result. So the faster I can sample the data even if I'm only sampling the noise the better response I can get with my smooth, uh, smooth exponential smoothing data. So that's kind of cool. So you always want to be sampling the data as fast as you can because if nothing else, it gives you more samples to average over when you're doing your smoothing to get rid of the noise. So let's look at how this smoothing works in this loop. This is the simplest version of this program I've got. There's some other sketches called smoothing time and smoothing time single that get a little more complicated. You can have a look at those if you want. But this, I think, is the simplest one to understand how it's working. There's this static variable called smooth that's saved so that we've got it every time we go through the loop. We're not creating a new one. And it's set initially equal to zero. And the uh, other static variable here, this unsigned long, the time t0, that's when it was the time that we last went through the loop. So we haven't been through the loop, so this is 0. We haven't smoothed yet, so this is 0. But we're going to update those and keep those values as we go along. Now, each time we go into the loop, we're finding out what the time is now. And then we can find out how long it has been since we last did this thing by taking the time now minus the, the old time. 
and we'll take the maximum of, of that will be uh, either equal to the difference between them, or if that difference is zero, it'll be one microsecond. So we're going to make sure it's positive and not zero. We get an analog input, in this case a simulated analog input, and we're going to update our smooth value based on that analog input. But we need to know first how much weight to put on it. So if it's been a really short time relative to the time constant, then this W is going to be a small value, uh, delta T over, over tau. If it's been a really long time, this W could get as big as 1, but because of this minimum function, it won't be any bigger than 1. So the biggest we can go is we can put all of the weight on the new value. And then we'll set the smooth value equal to 1 minus the weight. So this is how much weight we're going to put on the old values that we've already got, the smooth value of 0. And then this W function, delta T over tau, times the latest version. So the bigger this W is, the more weight we're putting on the latest measurement that we got. And then this works on printing stuff out occasionally. Finally, we've got T naught set equal to T now, so that when we come back next time, the T naught, the T old value, will be what it was when we went through this time around. So we'll keep going around and around this loop repeatedly, each time updating this smooth value based on the weight that we give the new value, which is based on how long it has been since we updated, divided by the time constant. So let's run this again. And again, we can watch on the serial plotter and see the results coming out. I like the blue result way better than the red result all the way along here. And to tune it to get a, an appropriate uh, balance between how quickly it'll follow and how much of the noise it'll eliminate, I have to tune that tau, that time constant, to match the characteristics of the signal that I'm trying to measure.